Okay, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Christophe Lyon. I work for Linaro and R. Uh, last year, we had, uh, I think, two extensive presentations about our CI. And so this year, just a short refresher of what we are doing. So I will remind you that our CI has a specific feature, which is tracking multiple components. Uh, I will briefly uh, talk about a recent uh, change in the process, how to submit patches. And then after that, I will show some graphs with the statistics showing the results. So the multiple components feature is uh, as follows. This describes a classic uh, CI loop where you track one component. So in our case, it would be one of binutil, GCC, GDB, whatever. You build that component run the tests and compare that to some baseline. What we do in addition to that, we do this kind of thing, but in addition to that, we track the full tuition components. So what we do is that we, at each new build, we update the versions of all the components of the tool chain. We run the tests and see what happens. So um, in more details, if there are some regressions detected. So let's say uh, build uh, n minus 1 is our uh, baseline. On build number n, we upgrade all the, uh, the versions. We find some, find some failures. What we do is that we update all the components but GCC, rerun the tests, and in that example, suppose this passes. So for the baseline, we update all the versions of all the components except GCC. Then we build with GCC upgraded. We'll find the regressions we had found with build uh, N. And now it's just a matter of a classic bisect in GCC history to identify the guilty commit. So this does help in, uh, in a few occasions. So I, I selected just a, a couple of example, examples. Uh, the first one was a binutil patch, which uh, caused a regression in the GLIPC test suites, uh, as described here. And this one was fixed in, uh, in binutils because it was a binutils bug. The second example uh, was a GCC patch causing a regression in GCC tests, namely in the libstdc plus plus ones. And so what we did in that case, that we contacted the person who made the commit in GDB. Uh, it was Tom. I don't know if he's here. And he said, oh, maybe my, um, so th this is what uh, the, notification email looks like. So we, you have uh, the, the commit and the description of the what regressed. So you can see here uh, that the commit is really in GDB and the test uh, regressing are in libstdc++. Um, what happened is that uh, Tom said, okay, maybe that's a problem with my Patch. And then Jonathan saying, oh, maybe it's a, pro a problem with the test suite, so maybe I can fix the test suite instead. And Tom said, oh, yes, it's a known long-standing bug in GDB. So the decision was made that, OK, let's fix it on the C++ side. I don't know if there is a bug there on the GC GDB side to track the long-standing bug. But yeah. yeah, so hopefully it will be fixed some time. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, a few words about a recent change we created in the patch submission process. Uh, it's about uh, the auto-generated files. So that covers, to my knowledge, two types of files. Those related to the auto tools, so auto-conf, auto-make, and the like. And some other parts of the tool chain which are uh, regenerated uh, during the build process, so I'm aware of some tables on the binutil sites for ER64, for instance. But also this morning, I think that uh, David uh, Malcolm mentioned some of the HTML URLs you need to rebuild. Uh, at some, in some cases, when you change the options, for instance. Uh, so this is part of the thing that are 
auto-regenerated. And so uh, until about six months ago, the patch submission policy required us to submit only the master files as, uh, as part of the patch, which meant that from the CI point of view, we received incomplete patches. Uh, so what happened after that is that as the uh, enable maintainer mode is broken in, well, in all the projects, in fact, in BNATILS and GCC2, when you use a high minus J factor in make, uh, the, the process breaks. So what it means that it that uh, quite a few times the CI detected or thought it detected, detected regressions and sent uh, notifications to patch authors. We will complain that, well, what is this crap of CI which is complaining my patch is perfect and I made no mistake, etc. So after a couple of uh, discussions, uh, I think we discussed that in uh, one of the GNU hours uh, meetings, um, we had also some feedback from maintainers who said that, in fact, it would be good if the patches contained all what the people intend to commit so that we can say, okay, on the patch, the master files are okay, but what you regenerated is okay too. And so the policy change was agreed, and now you are requested to post what you intend to commit as a, as a request for approval. And this means that the CI is now happier. So I know this caused some confusion for some people, so I just wanted to have a few words on that. It happens that people use the wrong auto tools. Ah, yes, 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 yes. That's so, yeah. In case you, you, you say, okay, you can push your patch and the person uses the wrong version, you, you see it. Uh, well, there is now the sourceware, uh, I don't know, uh, autoregen uh, bot also, which is checking that. But yeah. Uh, now, I will show you a few graphs showing uh, statistics of what we detected or reported over about uh, a bit more than uh, last year. Why one year? Because we started uh, to put uh, the system in production in August last year, if I remember correctly. Uh, so these uh, graphs show the number of uh, post-commit CI uh, regressions we Yes, uh, we detected for each component month after month. So this means that actual things which have been committed uh, for which we detected problems. Um, you can see that, of course, by far GCC has more regressions than other projects. Uh, and on average, we would say we are about uh, 20 regressions per month which means almost one per day, uh, working day in a month, which is quite a lot. Um, we also noticed this uh, interesting blue peak in, uh, in November last year here. So what happened? I expected some questions on that. Uh, what happened is that we broke the pre-commit CI. So people did not receive notification that uh, patches were broken before committing them. And so it took us one or two weeks to fix that, and in, in, in that time, um, uh, regressions had been committed. <laughs> exactly. Also, yes, there, there are the two, the two aspects. Exactly. <laughs> that, that difference in the peak there is the good you're doing, basically. It's yeah. Like you're stopping that many bad patches in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting to see that. And I guess that uh, February and March, April, which are quieter, is because it's uh, stage four. That's the assumptions we, we have. Now a different view of the same data. We, co we can compare uh, component per component the number of regressions we have detected for two architectures, ARM and the R64. Um, so uh, there is some overlap between the two because sometimes a regression has an impact on all architectures. And um, our explanation of the difference is that 
AR64 is a primary target, while ARM is not as primary. I think some, tar some sub targets of ARM are primary, but it's more difficult to test because hardware is less easily available to everyone. So it's less tested, and we see that there are more, uh, more regression. Two minutes, OK. Uh, so this is the pre-commit uh, notification uh, statistics. So you can see that uh, on average we sent about 150 uh, warnings. Uh, be careful, your patch, the one you have just submitted, has some problems every month. Uh, so that's uh, what that's more than five per day. So that's quite a, quite a big number, I think. Uh, and now. I will show you some dashboards showing the trends we are noticing about the number of uh, failures and passes on the, uh, on the test suite. So th this is um, GCC for um, AR64. Um, you can see, so the, um, let me check, the, the red line is a total uh, number of what? Uh, it's the number of passes. Uh, the green line is the number of failures, and the blue line is the number of flaky tests. Uh, so the, um, the interesting part on, on the red line, the drop in the number of passing tests, I tracked this down to a commit in, a, again, in NIBSTDC++, but in the test suite, uh, in uh, July somewhere. Um, when I think it's Jason who changed the, the number of C++ dialect we are testing and reduced from four to three, I think. So that's because when I saw the graph, I said, whoa, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> OK, so just one final uh, slide about GDB because Thiago is in the room. So maybe he can uh, share some comments on that one. Yeah, it's improving. Yeah. And this one is for ARM, which is more <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I think we have to investigate a bit more. Okay, thank you. I've thank finished. You. If you have any comments or questions.